Hi, I'm Rudy Winston with Canon USA. In this video, we're going to talk about ways that you can use the AI Servo AF to focus track moving subjects and to control how that autofocusing works with your moving subjects. There's a lot here, but maybe the most important thing is to keep in mind you may need to do nothing more than simply switch the camera over to AI Servo AF, put a focusing point on your moving subject, and begin to track it as it moves towards you. There are a lot of controls here that you can apply to change and optimize the servo focusing for different types of subjects. But again, the basic autofocus settings when you just simply go into servo for the first time may be all you need. Now that said, think about the different types of subject movement that you can encounter with different sorts of subjects. You can have movement that is continually moving straight at the camera at a steady continuous speed. You can have movement where the subject is changing speeds erratically, stopping and starting, zigging and zagging and so on. You can have movement where you're tracking a subject, but things may come between you and the subject. Sports photographers run into referees where it'll step in front of the camera. Uh, wildlife photographers may be following a moving subject, and then something like foliage or a tree or something comes between them and the camera momentarily. So there are all these different kinds of variables in subject movement that may come up. And the 7D Mark II gives you tools to optimize the autofocus to get the best best possible percentage of sharp shots in different situations. Now Canon engineers have identified three fundamental parameters that are really pillars of how the autofocusing system in the camera works. And it's important that you have a sense of what these three things are. The first one is what they call tracking sensitivity. And what they mean by that is how quickly is the autofocusing system going to respond if there is a sudden change in what you're shooting. You're focus tracking something coming, up the camera, coming at the camera and suddenly there's an interference. Something steps in front of you. The subject suddenly darts to one side and for a moment you, as you're getting ready to follow the subject, the camera is momentarily seeing just the background or something. How quickly is the camera going to respond when it sees something new? The second parameter parameter is what Canon calls acceleration-deceleration tracking. And this is a really important one. And it's one of the first cameras in the industry to give you the ability to tell the servo autofocusing, is the camera going to be focusing on a steadily moving subject or a subject that's going to be moving in an erratic kind of start-stop kind of fashion. This really is an important thing that gives you a, a, a real way to get the best possible results with the kind of subjects you're shooting. And then the final parameter that makes up all this is what Canon calls AF point auto switching. Now this one only applies if you're using more than one focusing point, such as the expanded AF, the zone AF, or the full 65 point automatic AF point selection. And basically, what you're selling, defining to the camera is how quickly do you want the camera to switch from one point to another to follow a subject as it moves laterally or up and down in the frame. Now, where this all comes together is what Canon calls the AF configuration tool. It's a simplified way to give you this type of fine-tuning control. There are six separate settings that Canon calls cases, case one, case two, and so on, uh, to change different aspects of those three fundamental parameters we just spoke of and tailor your AI Servo AF to different situations, different types of moving subjects. Case one is where the camera is going to be out of the box when you just simply set it into AI Servo. It's called the versatile multi-purpose setting. This is going to be the starting point. And for many of you, this may be the only setting you ever need. This is going to optimize the camera for subjects that are moving at a relatively steady, continuous pace. The system is fast enough and smart enough to respond to certain changes in subject speed and so on. But for many situations with moving subjects, case one is going to be your starting point. And again, if you've got a subject that you know is just coming at the camera at a steady speed, this is the place you probably want to be. Now case two is called continue to track subjects ignoring possible obstacles. And what this is going to do is change the way the focusing system thinks. 
If you're tracking a moving subject, it's going to slow down the tracking sensitivity. So if all of a sudden there's an interference, something comes between you and the subject, or the subject momentarily moves away from the autofocus point that you're using, the camera won't try to instantly refocus on what it now sees. It's going to slow down that process, giving you a perceptible one Mississippi to get back on that subject again and refocus on it as it continues to move towards you. Case three is called instantly focus on subjects suddenly entering the AF points. This is just the opposite. What you're telling the focusing system to do is to track one moving subject and then be able to instantly refocus on a new one. Anytime you're in a situation where things may suddenly appear and you want to grab onto them right away, this can be uh, a setting you want to consider. Case four, subjects that accelerate or decelerate quickly. This is another very important one. Sports photographers, wildlife photographers know there are many situations where you don't have the luxury of focusing on something that's moving at a steady, continuous pace towards the camera. Uh, basketball photographers working under the hoop with short focal length lenses where there's a lot of start and stop type of action. Uh, wildlife photographers working with subjects that may be darting erratically to avoid a predator or something like that. Birds in flight. There's so many others where you want to be able to react, have the system react to changes in subjects speed. It may stop and start suddenly, it may slow down or speed up suddenly. Case 4 is going to tell the camera, hey, be ready for this kind of movement. It'll still accommodate a certain degree of continuous steady movement, but it's much more ready to react to sudden changes. Case 5, erratic subjects moving quickly in any direction. Now this one only applies if you're using multiple focusing points. So in other words, if you're using automatic point selection with all 65 points, either of the zone AF settings or the expanded AF point settings, uh, AF area settings where you have more than one point active, this is going to speed up the process of the system automatically changing points from one to another to keep up with subjects that move across the frame, either side to side or up and down. Case six, subjects that change speed and move erratically. This one combines two things, the ability to speed up that changing of focusing points that we had in case five, and also to accommodate inconsistent stop-start type movement that we had with case number four. Now, you can do further adjustment if you want to by pressing the rate button on the back of the camera, and then in any of the cases that we've described, you can go in to the detail settings and further adjust any of the three parameters we talked about. So it's very easy to adjust the tracking sensitivity, the AF point changing, or the acceleration deceleration tracking to suit the kind of subjects that you need. Now finally, in addition to the parameters and the cases in the AF configuration menu, there are two additional AI servo AF adjustments you may want to think about, and these are in the second AF menu of the EOS 7D Mark II. These adjust the camera's shutter timing when you're working in servo, and they're called AI servo first image priority and AI servo second image priority. Let me quickly explain what they're going to do for you. AI servo first image priority is going to define the shutter timing if you are in servo autofocus and you start to focus on a subject and then press fully on the shutter button. Basically, you're telling the system either, hey, we want to get the first shot as quickly as we can, even if the focusing system hasn't completely confirmed sharpest possible focus. Or conversely, we can tell the system, hey, even if we got to wait another fraction of a second longer, let's slow down the firing of that shutter to ensure that the first frame in a sequence is as sharp as possible. So that's AI Servo first image priority. AI Servo second image priority takes place for the second shot in a sequence and beyond. If you're shooting with continuous drive, continuous firing, from the second shot onwards, do we want the system to fire at the fastest possible frames per second rate, even if during the sequence the autofocusing system isn't confident that it's got sharpest possible focus? Or on the other hand, do we want to tell the system, hey, we want the maximum number of sharp shots we can get, even if that means we have to slow the frames a second rate down a little bit to accommodate inconsistent movement or a subject without a lot of detail or something like that.
So these are two additional important settings uh, in AI Servo AF that you may want to consider going to. But again, don't feel the need to jump right into it the first time out. Try the camera at the basic settings and then understand that the EOS 7D gives you tremendous flexibility to fine tune AI Servo AF uh, for more challenging and difficult situations and subjects.